everyone and welcome back to our channel. Now in the title of this video I did promise you exciting news um, and while I still have a hopefully captive audience we are just going to jump straight in with that. And our news today is that we have actually started a Patreon account. And I know that some of you instantly are going to be like, oh, no, 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 they're going to come off YouTube. I'm not going to be able to access their content on here anymore. It's all going to be charged for and they're just in it for the money. Um, no, 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 no. And no, that is not the case at all. We are certainly not coming off YouTube. We love being on here. We love creating our content on here. We love the interaction and we love the way it is so inclusive for everyone. Um, the reason we are starting a Patreon is that, to be honest, we are getting busier and busier and busier. Soap is completely overtaking our house and everything is just going a little bit manic. Um, and in order for us to kind of continue being able to create this content for you guys, we personally need to find some way of just making a little bit of money to kind of help support our channel. Um, because, yeah, the videos sometimes that we do on here do take us away from paid work and they do take an awful lot of time to create, which is okay because it's so much fun. But while we are getting busier, we are needing to expand. There are so many things we need to be able to do to take our business further. We really need proper business premises and they are a way off. But anything that we can do to kind of speed the process along a little bit really helps because it means that we can continue creating content for you guys we can continue expanding and then hopefully everybody's happy you guys have some content to watch we have a slightly bigger place and we're not getting crushed under a mountain of soap um and it's all good so if you do enjoy our content and you would like more content because we are as i say we will not be taking content off youtube patreon will simply be about creating a bonus content so you will get bonus videos you will get bonus blogs you will get bonus photos we will show you things that we are planning and working on that we don't actually divulge on youtube um, so if you would like access to all of that kind of content then do check out our link I shall put it up here I shall also pop it in the description box and I shall try and find a way to attach it to our YouTube logo somehow as well pop over there and see what it is all about obviously I do not expect anybody to sign up to an account that is completely empty because that would be daft so I have already populated our account um, with a number of bonus posts there are some blogs up there there are some videos up there and there are some photos up there all of which are exclusive to patreon and won't be found on youtube there are a couple of public posts which obviously everyone can view but the kind of private content isn't available anywhere else um, and yeah purely bonus content for those of you who are, who are already familiar with patreon i do not need to explain what it is for those of you who are not familiar then do check out their website it is basically a platform where you can pay us a small amount of money per month and i do mean small we are starting our lowest tier at one pound per month for the bonus content um, and you then get access to i say all the additional stuff that we don't show on youtube so if you do enjoy our content and you want to see more of it it is one way for you guys to both support the channel and also have access to more content that you won't find anywhere else so hopefully that is a kind of win-win for everybody because we want to give you guys value for money we don't want to post you know once or twice a month and leave it there and just kind of take the money and move on we want to make it worthwhile for everyone so we will be posting content of some description whether that is a photo or a blog or a video three or four times per week sometimes it might only be small bits sometimes it will be longer bits it will vary but we will be posting regularly on there because we want you guys to feel like it is worthwhile supporting us in that manner as well um obviously if we have fairs or events we won't be able to post but other than that we will be updating it as regularly as we possibly can. Um, that is quite a lot of waffle, but that is our news. Um, hopefully you will check us out. And even if you don't like what you see, you can just move on um, and stick to the YouTube because we will be here 
Um, and for those of you who aren't able to support us at the moment, that is also absolutely fine. Just enjoy our YouTube videos because we're not going anywhere. Right, on to today's soap. And we are focusing on Christmas. I know, it is mid-July. We are in the middle of a mini heat wave. It is one of the hottest days of the year and I'm thinking Christmas trees. Um, the reason being is that we have so many Christmas soaps that we need to make and we have wholesale customers who want to see our Christmas soaps now. So we need to focus on Christmas. So today I'm just gonna show you us making our own little Christmas tree embeds, which we are going to use on the inside of one of our Christmas tree soaps that we will be making probably next week if we have the time. Let's jump in and make some Christmas tree embeds. So now that I have donned all my safety gear and I'm pretty much boiling myself alive in this heat, we are going to begin making Christmas trees. Um, I have got my oils and my lye and we are working at about 120 degrees Fahrenheit today. I am going to carefully pour my lye into my oils. You guys have seen this a million times before. You probably don't need close-ups of this bit. Frankly, it is the most boring part of the soap making process. So I'm just going to whisper it. We are bringing it with the stick blender to an emulsion today. We are going to be splitting it off and colouring it, so we don't want it at even a light trace, we want very light, you know, emulsion, just so that the oils and lye have combined and are not going to separate out again. This should not take long. So now we are at emulsion, we're going to split off 100 grams of the batter into each of these jugs and this will be the stalk or trunk of our Christmas tree. Ooh, far too much in that one. Let's tip some back out. So now we've split off our two separate portions. We can put one to one side because we won't need it for a while. And the second one, we are going to colour with some chestnut brown mica. Chestnut brown mica. We have got half a gram in here and we are going to pop it into our batter in this jug and then whiz it up to a trace. So now I'm going to pull in our mould and we are just going to pour this first amount of batter into the bottom of the mould. And this should be enough to just about cover the bottom of the mould if I have measured correctly. We don't need a lot of brown at all because the tree trunk does not form very much of the design at all. I'm just going to give it a little shake around to make sure that the entire base is covered, then I'm gonna tap it down to level it out. Now I'm going to put this to one side and we're gonna move on to the main body of the soap. So this is where we need to add in our fragrance oil and we are actually using the scent Christmas Tree by Candle Shack. It is an absolutely beautiful scent and it really does remind me of pine forests. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous smell probably up in my top three scents ever. Not just festive scents, just my top three scents. <laughs> and now we are going to add in some mica to colour this and we are using Green Goddess from Resonate. Um, we have got two grams here. I was gonna use a little bit more, but we ran out. So we're gonna test it with two and see what happens. So going in with the mica and then I'm going to use the stick blender when I've cleaned it because I've just realised I haven't cleaned it after the brown layer. We're going to use a stick blender to work all of this in. So blender now clean and mixing in the green goddess mica and again bringing it to a light to medium trace. So 
So at the minute, it looks like we've got a fairly nice green colour. Doesn't seem to have uh, been impacted by using less mica than I was actually hoping to. So if it does work, that'll be great, because then we can use less mica in all of the soaps, because we haven't yet had this one assessed. And that'll save us a bit of cash. Right, time to pull that mould back in for layer number two. So layer number two, obviously going over layer number one, and we are going over the spatula so that we hopefully do not break through the lower layer. And just slowly, carefully pouring it over. And this should come most of the way up the actual soap mould because we're only gonna have a tiny little bit of brown going on the top as well. And this Christmas tree scent is smelling absolutely divine so fresh so kind of just really really reminiscent of pine forests thoroughly recommend this scent so time for that third and final layer which is going to be exactly the same as our first brown layer we have got our chestnut brown mica going in to our batter and I'm going to be honest, these little jugs are an absolute nightmare for the stick blender because the blender only just fits in, but they do work. They're just a little bit of a pain. So I'm going to be using exactly the same technique that we did for the lower layer. So pouring it slowly over the spatula. The green layer is slightly less thick. Than the previous layer was so I'm hoping that this will not break through it seems to be okay but I'm gonna go nice and slow just to be sure so that is it for the first part of Christmas tree making and you are probably looking at this wondering how on earth this is going to become Christmas trees but I promise you it will if you saw last year's Christmas tree video, then you probably already know how we're going to turn this into Christmas trees. But if you haven't, prepare to be amazed. We're going to leave this until tomorrow now, then we're going to turn it out and make some trees. 24 hours later, we are back for part two of the Christmas tree and making. Uh, just a couple of things about the loaf we made yesterday. Firstly, who is the idiot who decided to unmould it? too soon because they were being impatient not me and, and ended up kind of messing up the bottom a little bit because it got stuck to the mold that's a lesson in patience isn't it yeah took it out too early could have just left it for another probably two three hours and it would have been fine but i thought it was okay i popped it out and i ended up losing some of the bottom which i have tried to squidge back into place hopefully it won't matter too much second point the green is kind of changing colour. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what we are going to end up with as the final green. I guess that will only truly become apparent once the soap is cured. Um, but it should be all right, we hope. Anyway, onward with making the Christmas trees. And to do this, we are going to use a soap cutter firstly to slice it into individual bars as we always do with our soaps. So, down into individual bars. I will say in my defence for actually unmoulding early is that to do this, I do need the soap to still be pretty soft. So that's kind of why I was rushing it this morning as well. Right, now we remove these and then we're going to chop them again because I need these bars to be half the size that they actually are. So opening up again and then trying to place it back onto the cutter but obviously so that it's going to be cut in a different position this time hopefully doing it like this is going to work actually Wayne I might get you to pull the cutter down and I might try and just hold it in place if that is okay or we might be all right I don't know I just don't want my ends to fall off no, it feels like it's going to be all right. So, cutting again. So now we have got lots of really slim pieces of soap that are kind of reminiscent of some sort of minty dessert, really. Yeah, you can see the colour morphing just there as well. 
So I'm going to take these off the uh, cutter now and then I'm going to show you how we are going to turn them into Christmas trees. So another thing I forgot that I need to say about today's video is initially these were going to be soaps that we were going to be selling um, but unfortunately when I uh, took our cookie cutter which we are using to make Christmas trees out of its little house I noticed that since we last used it many months ago it has rusted which is really disappointing um, so obviously we are not going to be selling these ones because it's just not very nice or sanitary or a good idea to be selling soap that has been cut with a rusty soap cutter. We are still going to make the Christmas trees because I also need to be able to get photos for our wholesale stockists and for some Christmas PR that we are trying to get. So the soaps won't be wasted because they will be used for our PR shots and to be honest I'll probably still use them myself. We know when I'm having a wash, we just won't sell them. So the soap won't be wasted, but also it won't be sold because I'm not happy selling soap when I've cut it with something that looks like this. We have ordered more of these cookie cutters and hopefully they will be with us next week. Anyway, just that little explanatory, expla, expla, explanation. How do you say explanation. that? No, the word, explan explanatory. Explanatory. Explanatory, <laughs> just a little explanatory detail there for you. Let's cut some Christmas trees. So to cut my Christmas trees, I'm just very basically taking one slice of soap, I am turning it round, placing it in front of me, and then I'm using the cookie cutter to essentially just stamp out the soap. And this is why I wanted the soap to still be soft, because if the soap firms up too much, then it does not cut very well. So let's get cutting. So I should be able to get three trees from each piece of soap hopefully. So I've lined the tree up here and I've made sure that the trunk piece ends where the brown ends and then I'm just pressing down. And this is why we needed to cut the soap again into smaller slices because if it is bigger than the tree cutter then we do end up with problems with actually releasing that. I then use a knife to just cut it away, although that would have just pulled away quite nicely by the look of it. And I remove the excess. These excess pieces will be used. I will either um, grate them up and use them in other soaps that are used for personal use, or I will find another use of them. They are not going to be wasted. We do not like wastage. And then we just very carefully push out the tree. Being careful of the stalk or the trunk because it does sometimes have a tendency to come away. But there we go, that is one Christmas tree. Now I just need to stamp out all the rest. And this does take an incredibly long time. But it really is worth it in the end. I'm going to cut the rest of these out now and then I will be back when they've all been done. So all the trees have now been cut, which took about 15 to 20 minutes. We have had a little outfit change, don't worry, I am not starting some kind of fashion revolution. Um, I stopped briefly to uh, deal with a email and have a little drink and I managed to uh, cover myself in juice. So. Um, that explains, if you're wondering, the outfit change. Anyway, now what we are going to do is we are going to use distilled water and a little brush to kind of stick all these trees together. Because although they sort of look like they're stuck together now, they are just balanced. The distilled water will kind of act like a glue and make sure they do stay nicely together. So I'm starting with one, just taking a little water on the brush, lightly brushing the water over the soap, then taking the second tree, placing it on top of the first, trying to make sure it, it, it is as lined up as possible, gentle little press and then repeat, a little bit of water on the tree, next tree from the pile turned over, placed on top and pressed down. 
And let's just see that one more time from a different angle. Water brushed lightly over the surface of the tree. Second tree added on top, lined up, pressed down. And this water will act as glue. It will stick the soap really well. When you think about when soap gets wet and how it sticks to the side of your bath or the side of your sink, it sticks hard like glue, doesn't it? And that is what it will do with these uh, little tree embeds. So they should stick nice and firm. I'm going to carry on working through the pile now and we'll be back when they are all stuck. So here we have two completed towers of Christmas trees. Admittedly, they are a little bit kind of leaning tower of Pisa style -y. but once they are in the kind of soap loaves with the rest of the soap, that is not going to make a difference and it's not going to be noticeable. So pretty happy with them. We will be using these in the next day or two to actually create our Christmas tree soap. Uh, we will show it on YouTube, but that will probably not be until like October, November time. So there will be a little bit of a wait uh, until we can reveal what these look like. Unless, of course, if you do choose to support us on Patreon, we will be dropping a little sneak peek of the finished soaps up there. Um, but anyway, thank you for joining us while we created our Christmas tree embeds today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I hope it's given you some inspiration for how you can create different embeds for your own soaps. We will see you next week. Um, yeah, if you want to have a look at our Patreon, that would be ace. If not, enjoy the YouTube videos. Have a lovely weekend and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.